Hello there and welcome to Workshop 1138. I'm Robin and today we're going to be adding something new to my channel. This is a CNC router or at least a, a basic skeleton of one. Uh, in case you don't know what a CNC router is, it's a computer controlled cutting machine. Um, what you'd have is a rotary cutter sort of mounted on the, uh, on the front here. Um, we've got three axes of movement and these are all controlled by the computer so the thing the cutting heads are mounted on can travel up and down. Um, this piece here can travel side to side along these tracks, and there are also some tracks along the uh, along the sides there. So this whole section can move forwards and backwards. Now I started uh, a project building one of these myself um, just over a year ago, um, but unfortunately, uh, having bought all the pieces off eBay, like all the uh, sort of the special guide rails, we've got lead screws um, and the motors, power supplies, uh, the cutting head and everything. Um, I made this huge sort of uh, contraption which was far too big. I, I, had, I didn't get around anywhere near finishing it um, so it just became one of my unfinished projects and it occupied such a large sort of volume in the shed um, that I could no longer use it as a workshop space. Um, so this one I bought recently on eBay which is a, a lot smaller but I'm, I'm sure this will be absolutely probably overkill for what I need. This came from the manufacturers in Slovakia. It seems a very uh, very solid unit. It's got a welded frame. Uh, it weighs about 40 kilos and it was delivered in large chipboard crate. Sadly, um, there were two holes through the side of the crate where a forklift truck driver had been a bit careless um, and they'd actually gone through and damaged one of these aluminium side panels. Um, I contacted the manufacturer, let them know. Um, fortunately, the really delicate bits, which are the lead screw and this sort of guide rail down here, weren't damaged um, at all, had not been touched. Um, and it was only a case of just uh, a bit of gentle hammering to get that uh, aluminium panel back into shape. I'm now filming in the shed which is a little bit noisier I'm afraid. Uh, you can see there we're resting on a large sort of platform. This has been the, the cut down version of the original platform that I made for the first machine. Um, they've got a very simple system with this that they've got bolts that go through the sort of aluminium tubes um, and screw into these sections here and they use those to mount the NEMA 23 motors. Inside here we've got a flexible coupling and that's joining the motor to the lead, the end of the lead screw. Um, it's flexible because it, that will allow for, uh, for it to it'll deal with a small amount of misalignment. Now at the very top here where we've got where the motor for the z-axis would join with its lead screw. Um, it's actually arrived from the factory with all these these holes are slightly offset um, with the set with the center for this and unfortunately they're so badly offset um, that I can't sort of make up the difference with a flexible coupling so what I'm going to have to do um, well what I decided to do I've got this uh, aluminium box lid which because it's got all these sort of raised bits around the edges is actually fairly stiff um, and I'm going to drill the holes in this and actually mount this on top of the uh, on top of the bolts and then I'm going to drill some new holes in the top and mount the motor into that. As the carriages travel along the sides of the machine um, we're going to need a way of making sure that the wires um, don't get tangled up or trapped. Um, so the thing to do is to, I've got this plastic uh, drag chain um, and all that's going to happen is I'll put extra long wires and they're all going to be routed through the inside of this to make sure they don't get tangled. 
Now I'm going to have to look into dust extraction um, to try and keep this place clean uh, because this MDF is going to generate a lot of dust and it's not particularly nice dust. Um, so this is a sort of cheap plastic cyclone device that sort of needs to be mounted on a bucket. You have an intake here which comes from your machine via a piece of hose like that and this is just going to go off to a domestic vacuum cleaner. Uh, what should happen is that the solids sort of go in here, they spin around the outside, gather speed and they end up sort of dropping through the bottom and into a large collector and then uh, a much cleaner waste air gets uh, sucked out through here and into the vacuum cleaner. So hopefully you end up with a bucket full of the, uh, of the large stuff before the vacuum cleaner gets anywhere near full. I know there's going to be a lot of sawdust which generally settles on things like the lead screws and these guide rails. Um, although there's sort of rubber seals um, and, pl and this plastic uh, ring here to sort of keep the dust out from all the, uh, the bearings um, it would be really nice if we can actually provide something over here to prevent most of the dust getting on there. Um, I, there are sort of concertina things that, uh, that you can buy. Um, also for this section down the side, um, what I'm hoping to do is to have a sort of another bit that sticks out here at the side. Um, so that that can pass through it and then this slot hopefully a maybe a, a sort of material covering with a bit of a weight in or something so it will it will sort of seal itself after this has passed through it as you can see there's still a lot to do I'll be making some more of these videos and it will probably happen whenever I've got something uh, new that's been achieved that I can show you or talk about and the next thing lined up is probably going to be involving the electrical side, um, how things are wired together and the interface into the computer. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching and join me next time on Workshop 1138. This is Robin signing off for now.